Okay, so this is going to be a short lecture on matplotlib or matplotlib, uh, specifically matplotlib pyplot. So matplotlib is a uh, object-oriented interface plotting package uh, for for uh, Python and specifically with, for use with NumPy and SciPy and and the three of them together, NumPy, SciPy, and matplotlib, sort of reproduce a very uh, feature-complete MATLAB implementation, essentially. Uh, in other words, all of the uh, functionality, uh, numerical uh, algorithms in, Pat in MATLAB and plotting capabilities can be reproduced with essentially those three things, NumPy, SciPy, and MATPLOTLIB. Uh, there are many other great packages for numerics, uh, statistical packages, pandas, other things we won't talk about in this class um, that um, you know can, can take things a lot further than what MATLAB can do. Um, but um, in this class, you know, basically, SciPy, NumPy, Matplotlib are, are MATLAB uh, feature equivalent. Okay, so the Matplotlib, Matplotlib PyPlot is a set of functions that are essentially one-to-one -one correspondence with MATLAB. And so, if you know how to do plotting in MATLAB, then you implicitly know how to plot with Matplotlib once you've loaded the library, right? We'll also see that we can use them in line in the Jupyter Notebook by simply issuing this uh, cell magic. So right at the beginning, of, or at least once in the notebook, at the top, typically, you issue this command, and then the plots will show up right in line uh, as part of the notebook interface. So here's a basic example. And again, uh, I created this in the, in the Jupyter Notebook. So first thing I did was issue the matplotlib inline command. And then I import matplotlib pyplot. And just as often as we do with NumPy, where we say import NumPy as np so that we don't have to type this out every time, uh, we're going to shorten this or give it a, sh you know, a short name as plt for plot, of course. So then once we ha have that imported, we just preface plt. Uh, and then all of the commands that follow that are essentially MATLAB commands. So in this case, we're just going to plot uh, a list of numbers that go from 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, and then, you know, if you don't give it a second argument, it's just going to plot those against the indices. Again, 0, 1, 2, 3, so it's always going to be a straight line. And in this case, I've given it an X label of, you know, some numbers, okay? So those are your basic standard uh, MATLAB com commands, plot and X label that you would use, and they create a plot in MATLAB as well. Uh, so we can go on and style it some more. We can uh, add a grid, for example, and we can do other things. Uh, we can use NumPy data. In, in fact, if you don't use NumPy data, uh, if you use regular Python lists as, as arguments to the plot command, well, it, it, it just sort of automatically converts them to NumPy uh, data anyway. And so, you know, of course, if we actually give it some NumPy data, so in this case, we're going to plot uh, t versus t in a blue line. Uh, uh, we're also going to plot t versus t squared in another blue line. And then we're going to plot uh, t versus t cubed uh, as the red line. So then the, there we have the three plots. And while we can go on and style this uh, accordingly, we can add grid lines. We can do a lot of things, you know, however we want. Uh, just like you would in MATLAB, control the placement of tick marks, x labels, y labels. Uh, there are some built-in sort of styling things. And so in this case, if I import matplotlib. Notice not matplotlib pyplot, but just rather matplotlib, and then run the function matplotlib style use, and I set the style to 538. Well, many of you may know 538 is a famous website uh, run by Nate Silver, and uh, they do a lot of statistical analysis on um, sports, elections, uh, public opinion, lots of things like that. And they have a certain style that they've developed in their plots. Uh, they always have a gray background and certain fonts and other things. And, and so in this case, by just issuing this command, style 538, it actually reproduces a, a plot in the, in the style that you'd see on 538. And there are several other ones. Seaborn is one that uh, makes nice looking plots. Uh, and several other kind of built-in styles. So uh, if you just want sort of a, a good looking plot right out of the box, you can just use something quick like that. But you have the full feature, the full ability to, to make the plot, uh, to style it however you want. Um, so the reason this lesson is short, is short, of course, because if you know how to plot in MATLAB, which I assume most of you do, 
then you, you, you sort of already know how to pl plot using matplotlib pyplot. So there's not a lot to talk about in that respect. And you can go on, you can do more complicated things like surface plots, contour plots, other types of two and three dimensional plots that you can do in MATLAB. And uh, you know the, the, the features are the same. Uh, there are many other plotting libraries out there for Python. And, and, and some of these are far more modern. And in fact, um, you know, in, some, in a lot of respects are better. Uh, however, you know they would they do they do not use the same sort of commands that um, that that MATLAB does, and therefore you, you know these would be a much greater learning curve. So, for example, Bokeh uh, and ggplot are both based on something called the grammar of graphics uh, to produce the plots. And so, uh, Bokeh, both of these are are really good for producing sort of plots that are going to appear in websites or web pages. Uh, Bokeh allows really interactive exploration of the data. So if you had a lot of data, um, you, you know you can zoom in on certain sections and do other things that are really interesting. Uh, if you're if you're familiar with the R plotting language, uh, I'm sorry, the R statistical language, then the the plotting library within R is something called ggplot. And so ggplot is sort of a port of R ggplot over to Python. And so if you know, if you use R and you know the commands there, then you can actually, uh, you, you sort of know ggplot already and, and you can use that within the plot Python ecosystem as well. Uh, and then finally, you know, Plotly is sort of a web-based plotting utility and you can use its features within the Jupyter Notebooks and other things. All of these are active links, so if you want to, if you want to go ahead and explore them, you can look at the notes that I post online and you can, you know, say click on any of these and you can look at some of the interesting plots that you're able to create along with examples. So here's a bokeh plot uh, for the you know, solution of the Lorenz equations. And, and like I mentioned, you, know, you have the ability to, to zoom in and do other things like that.